from R Programming 101. I've got uh, Andrew Gard from Equitable Equations on the line. Andrew, how are you today? Good to see you, Greg. I'm doing really well. Thank you. I'm excited um, here on Today I Learned. We have a guest. One of the best things about, um, about R is learning from other people. And so we're here with David Kais, founder of R for the Rest of Us. David, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for uh, having me on. I appreciate it. It's really uh, my our pleasure. Tell us what is what is R for the rest of us for those who might not be aware of this organization. Yeah, so R for the rest of us uh, is a, a business that I founded in 2019. So it's been around for over five years at this point. Um, started out just doing education, so teaching people to use R. Got online courses. Um, a cohort-based course called R in Three Months, where we teach, it's kind of like a, an R boot camp. And in addition to that, we work with organizations switching to R. Um, we also do some consulting work where people kind of hire us to do the R uh, for them. So I'll be actually showing something that came up in uh, a consulting project that we did recently. Oh, that's awesome. What do you, uh, what do you got for us? Great. Um, should I put my screen up? Yeah, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. jump right in okay. there. Thanks. All right. What I'm going to show you is a package called Shadow Text. I actually originally found this package through the work of John Byrne Murdoch, who um, works for the Financial Times, did a very famous set of visualizations uh, on COVID. And er an early version of that was actually he did it in ggplot, posted on Twitter, posted the code. And it used this package called Shadow Text, which I had never seen. And so I was kind of interested to learn more about it. And we've actually used it several times uh, in, in projects that we've done. So to show you, I'm just going to begin by loading three packages, the Tidyverse, Shadow Text, um, and the Scales package, which I use to uh, nicely format numbers. Um, so I've, I'm, I'm going to bring in some data. Um, this project was looking at kind of housing and demographic data in the state of Connecticut. Uh, it was a parameterized reporting project. So we did one report for each town and county in the state. Um, and I'm looking specifically now at population projection data that we made a chart, which I'll show in just a second, looking at how each county and town is projected to grow in various age groups from 2020 to 2040. So um, we made a function, I'm, I've just called it here, population projection plot, which basically takes that population projection data, selects a town that we want to plot, a county that we want to plot, and then we can see on line 17 here, we filter to keep those. We do have a couple things here. The, the ggplot code, I'm actually not going to walk through it in great depth. It's a, it's a little bit um, more involved. But let me actually just run that function to show you what it looks like. Um, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll just run it here just to show you kind of what this chart looks like. So when you run it, you can see, for example, this is looking at Hartford um, and Hartford County. So you can see Hartford's the red, Hartford County is the pink and Connecticut is the gray. Now, what we wanted to do when making this is we wanted to add some text to label Hartford. So you label just the, the mm -hmm. town. So you can see we've added a GM text here. And we do that. And I'll move this over just so we can see it. Um, and that looks pretty decent for Hartford, right? Like you can mm -hmm. see all the, the text doesn't look bad at all. Now, the issue came when we tried to do the same thing for another town, for Stamford, uh, Connecticut, which is in Fairfield County. So you can see we're, we're plotting it for those yeah. two. So if I do those same two things, if you take a look at what happens, look, for example, here, you see how the, like the 17 percent, just because of how Stamford lines up with um, you know Fairfield County in Connecticut, the text is actually on top of the lines in some cases. Mm -hmm. And because we we're doing it as a parameterized report, like we had to make sure that this was going to work for all 170 towns. We didn't know what the data was going to look like for yeah. every permutation. And so we wanted to make sure that that text was visible. So what we did was we used GM shadow text. So basically I've just replaced GM text here with GM shadow text. And the uh -huh. only other thing I've added is I've added this BG color white. 
And so if I run this and you take a look at the numbers here, so look at that 17, you can see hopefully that it adds like a little bit of a shadow. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like a, a border around the text. And what that does is it makes it no matter whether the text is, you know, on the white background or if it's on, to on top of any of those lines, it's a lot more visible. Um, and so we have used this a lot to ensure that the text really shows up kind of no matter, you know, where it happens to, to land relative to other GMs. That's really nice. So the, it, so when you said white, it, that shadow is really a white shadow that yep. you can't see. And it, but it, you can see that the white matters when the number would have otherwise overlapped with some other color or some other sort of texture that's on the plot. That is yeah. lovely. I'm trying to, I don't know if I can zoom in anymore because I'm, um, there we go. So oh, yeah. you can there see you yeah, there okay. how it shows up. But like this, yep. for example, it you don't see it on the top because that's a white background. But for yeah, example, yeah. here it, it, it shows it up. There, yeah. It's subtle, but it just makes sure that your text is really visible. And again, in, in context, we do a lot of parameterized reporting where we're making multiple reports. We don't know yep. what the data is yeah. going to look like for every town. And so we need to make sure that it's going to be visible no matter what. And this is a really good um, trick to be able to do that. That's, That's a fantastic I, um, trick. You'll see um, shadow text a lot of times in YouTube thumbnails, actually, uh -huh, um, uh -huh. where I, I don't know. I don't know the rationale there. That obviously, those aren't parameterized, but it's a really common thing. Um, you'll see. I also want to say I appreciate you um, citing sort of where you learned this. I um I think that's always really nice to be able to chase things back to the source when possible. Yeah, I mean it was yeah. literally I I remember the exact point because John Byrne Burdock posted a link to his um to a GitHub GIS. Yeah. And it was on there. And I was I remember looking through it, it was fully reproducible. So I ran the code and then I looked at it, I was like, what is this shadow text? I've never seen this before. And I still find people mostly very few people that I know at least have heard of it. So I, I like telling people where I found it and hopefully helping them to to think yeah. about ways they might use it too. You know what I like about this, David, is this is not a solution that I would even have even thought of. In other words, had you not shown us this, I wasn't going to go out and search for it because I wouldn't have thought that this is even an option. It's mm -hmm. the kind of thing that if I had text and it was sitting in, you know, over, over, over something and it wasn't very clear, I would have been like, well, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? That like, let's right. just live with that. Actually, he has a, a lovely solution. The other nice thing about this is that the audience will probably not even perceive what you've done. Yeah. It's just that th their experience will be a little bit better, a little bit sharper. You know, the information is conveyed in a way that's cleaner without them really even realizing that you've put in this really subtle little extra that makes it clean. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really common actually in data journalism. You know, it's very, yeah. it's a lot of little things like that. And John Byrne Murdoch is obviously a very talented um, data journalist. And so when you see, you know, things in the New York Times or, or Financial Times or wherever else, you don't necessarily notice those small details, but you just know it's yeah. very easy to look yeah. at and comprehend. And, and it's, it mm -hmm. is a, a bunch of small tweaks that kind of make it so. And it's often when those tweaks aren't there that you notice that they're not there. Exactly. In other words, you know what I mean? Like that something sitting over something else and you're like, ah, oh, God, that's a little bit fuzzy. But actually, exactly. this just takes all of that away. Nice. Yep. Very, very nice indeed. I love it. So the immediate prompting for this conversation, David, is I know you have a book out now just recently, I believe. Um, what What's this? Yeah. So uh, my book, which I've found uh, from the other room and I'm holding up here is called R for the Rest of Us, a statistics-free introduction. Um, so this is something I've been working on for <laughs> two and a half years, a long time. I knew I knew writing a book was going to take a while, um, yeah. took even, even longer than expected. So oh um, the idea behind the book is both to be an introduction for people who might not think of themselves as our programmers mm -hmm. to R. I mean, that's kind of the mission behind R for the rest of us, you know, the nice. business. Yeah. And so the book, you know, obviously fits with that. But then also for more experienced people, I think I want to show people ways to use R that are, are useful that they might not have considered. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a chapter mm -hmm. in here. E each chapter takes the experience of kind of one person or, or multiple people as like an example um, and then uses code that they've written and kind of walks through it to 
teach about a certain topic. So for example, there's nice. um, a topic on data visualization with R and I interviewed Cedric Scherer and Georgios Karamanis, two people who do really excellent data viz with ggplot. We took uh, an example um, plot that they made looking at um, the increase of drought in the American West over the last couple decades and kind of broke it down um, and then talked about how you can apply principles of high quality data visualization using R. Yes. So I think, again, you know, for people who use R and maybe work in ggplot, hopefully they can learn something to think about ways that they can, you know, improve the, the data viz that they do. I like the way you've done it because that's very different from most other books out there on R. Like as you've mm -hmm. described that, I was, I, I was mentally going through, because I've bought so many R books, it's unbelievable. Um, and as you were talking, I was like, no, I haven't seen that approach. Yeah. And and the other thing is this, I'm in the, for the rest of us category. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I will be buying this book 100%. And I, I like, I look forward to reading it because I'm, I'm not a, a, a expert. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I've, I've got a YouTube channel and I'm sort of teaching as I'm going, but, um, it, but literally I come on these calls with Andrew to learn. So, mm -hmm. and, and yourself too, now, so I'm excited about the book. I wanted to say, I love the idea of having, um, of doing these interviews and spotlighting some of these other individuals. Cause one of the really distinctive things about R is the community that surrounds Definitely. it. And yeah. um, I mean, it's sort of the first thing that a lot of people think of when yeah. they think of R. I agree. Um, I completely agree. I'm also, per you know, personally, again, fascinated with it because my, my sort of entree into all this is actually the, the exact opposite end of things where I'm coming in from a math background and mm -hmm. really like wanting to dive into that a little more deeply. And then the R is kind of going along with that sometimes. So um, it's super exciting. We'll make sure we get um, a link down below. Where's the best place for people to get yeah. this book, David? Well, so there's an online version. People can read it for free. Um, book, it's just, you can go to book.rfortherestofus.com. Okay. And then there are links there if people want to buy a, a physical or electronic copy. We'll make sure yeah. to, to get all that down down below in the description. Awesome. Absolutely. And I've got note, I mean, I'm speaking to my audience and my channel, but I'm sure the same applies to Andrew's. Uh, we would absolutely recommend that you get the book. I'm going to get it. Um, I'm going to get the hard copy. You know, because um, I, I actually find it easier to read a physical book than to read online. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm massively that. dyslexic, so that's part of that. But mm -hmm. um, excited about that. Very, very excited. Great, and sometimes, thanks. especially when I'm coding, you know, I know you can copy and paste if you're looking at a browser, but sometimes things sync in better for me mm, if I'm right. literally having that physical act of tippy tap. Well, I take a book and I get highlighters and pens and I kind of like I mess them up a bit. I love but it. then I know where to find things and I kind of can remember them. So I'm going to get the, yeah. the hard copy for sure. But it's quite nice that there's the online version as well. And you can quickly go to it and reference things. And that. that's, so right. that's right. Well, and that was key to me when I was looking for a publisher. My number one criteria was I wanted a publisher that would allow me to do mm -hmm. a free online version because, you know, Andrew, you were talking about the community being yeah. such a, an important part yeah. of, of what makes our special. And I felt like, I have learned so much from other people in the art community. It would sort of be a disservice mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I published a book that was, you know, only available for purchase. Amazing. And so I was grateful that they, that my publisher, No Starch, allowed me to do that. That's fabulous. Yeah. And, and um, David, you're okay with us putting links in the description, et cetera, as to how people can get you, find you, find you on LinkedIn, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah really probably like... LinkedIn is the best way, okay. I guess, to find me. I don't know. Social media is weird these days. It's so fractured these days. It is, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I follow you on LinkedIn, and I'm, I'll encourage others to do the same thing. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. And David, thank you again.